Hey YouTube, this is Prince from Desi Programmer. Welcome back to another exciting video about Flutter. And in this video, we are going to talk about caching data. So the concept is pretty simple. If you have ever used Firebase, you will see that Firebase automatically caches data so that you can see the same things when your even when your device is offline. Now in this video, we are going to we are going to do the same thing, but instead of using Firebase as it does automatically, we are going to use a custom backend that's a Node.js backend. If this is very necessary as most of the time when you're creating an application and you will be using APIs, you don't want your user to have a bad experience saying that, hey, you don't have an internet connection. You will see major applications like Facebook, Instagram use this concept so that even when your device is not connected, you can see a couple of post images and all. So in this video, we're going to talk about data caching and let's talk about the setup that we have already and take a look at it. I already have this very simple Node.js backend coded. All that it does is that if you go to this particular a route that slash API slash data, I will return this simple data, which has, which has the name of some web series and their um, marks basically score on how much I like them. So, and here is that data that's simply being returned if I just go to this particular URL. So this is one part of setup that I have. The next setup that I have is my application. Everything is still boilerplate. I have not added anything. This is just a simple stateless visit. That's um, our home, a home visit. That's our app. And here in our scaffold, I have a center with a text that says caching. And in my powspec.yaml, I've already added some libraries as we have to use them. So here I have HTTP obviously for making HTTP request. I have Hive, Hive Flutter and Path Provider for using Hive Database as we're going to use Hive Database in this video to cache the data. Since it's a NoSQL database that stores data in JSON format and all, storing will be very easy as our APIs will return JSON data. Then we have Toast, so so simple Toast when internet is not available. Now. Let's talk about the basic setup. The first we have to set up Hive database. For that I have imported the Hive package and the Hive Flutter package. Then my main function I'm waiting for Hive to initialize for Flutter and then I'm running my application. Now here I have the simple open box future function that will open a box of our, that will open a Hive box and that particular box is named as data. I'm using the provider package to get the uh, application document directory. And since I have to use a box, I will name this as a global variable, a box that's named as box. And since I'm casting a single strain of data, I am just creating a simple box. If you have to cast multiple data, you can create multiple boxes. Also, this video is a very basic implementation of this concept. So in a real world application, you will have too many API endpoints. You will have too many data to cache. So handle it there. Here, I'm just going to talk about the code to the basic idea of how caching is going to work. Now, having done that, this is the time to actually code a function that will get all the data from the internet. Okay. I'll name this as get all data. Now, what this function is going to do is it's going to work according, according, um, according to a flow that I have already designed. Okay. So take a look at here. Here, I will just open my app or my screen. Basically, this is the page that I want to use. And here I will check if the internet is available or not. If the internet is available, we will update the database. That's basically getting the data from the server and then putting it in the database and then showing it to the user. Or if there is no internet, we will load the data from the database. And here, when you uh, when you run an application for the first time, there is no internet, even the database is going to return an empty data. So we have to handle that too. And when somebody refreshes, all that we have to do is to again, check if the internet is available or not. If there is no internet here, we have to just show an error. And if there is internet, we have to update the database and then update our visit. So let's talk about the getting all the data from our, from internet. So here I have to first wait to open the box. So I'm saying await open box. This will make sure that my box is open. Now I, I have to get the data from our internet. So I have the string URL and this particular URL is the local host URL. But since we're using it on application, now this, is, this isn't 127.0.0.1. Instead, it is HTTP colon double slash 10.0.2.2 colon 8000, the port number where my uh, Node.js Express application is running and slash API slash data, the route where my data is, route where my data is present. Now I am going to use a try catch exception. I'm not using the connectivity plugin here to check internet access because that too uh, gives error. So I'm going to use try and catch. So I have to first try to get some data. I will say war response is equal to await HTTP, which obviously is not available. So I have to import, I have import HTTP dot dart as HTTP. Now I have to say HTTP dot get this particular URL. Once this is done, all that I have to do is to decode the data that we just got. So I will say var JSON decode is equal to JSON decode and it will be automatically imported from dart colon a convert 
and here I have to pass the source. So, okay, now I can't use the same one twice. It should be an underscore. And the source is going to be response dot body. Now, having done that, all that I have to do after parsing the data, I have to put the data. But there can be a different scenario when there is no internet. So when you're loading app for the first time, if there is no internet, what do we have to do? So here I have to catch an exception that socket exception, right? And after catching the socket exception, what this means is that there is no internet right now. So uh, I won't show a toast right now because I will show a toast only when somebody tries to refresh. Here, when we have a socket, socket exception, all that I have, to, I have to do, I'm simply saying that, hey, I, I, you don't have any internet. That's, I'm just printing it. Now, after decoding the data, I have to insert the data that, because see, now here, there is a thing. If I'm not inserting the data and I'm just directly updating the UI, then if there is an error in inserting the data, the next time when somebody opens, he will, he or she, whoever the user is, they will see the last data. And I want to make sure that my data is currently updated in the database. So instead of showing the data that we got from the internet, I will first update it in the database and then I will try to show this from the uh, database itself. So for that, I have this function. I, I will name this as, come on. This function is named as uh, future put data. And this put data will accept some data and this will be an asynchronous operation. Now here I have to first wait for my box to clear itself because this will be called every time we have to update the data. So first we have to clear all the data that's already available in the database and then I have to insert the data. Now here in data insertion will be based on what kind of data you are retrieving and how you are um, having that. So here the data that I'm retrieving is an is a list of JSON objects, right? So this data is going to be a list of JSON object and I have to insert every particular JSON object. So I can just say something like for some variable D in data that's for every JSON object in that list. I'm just saying box dot put and I'm using put because put will enter that uh, add the data with an index. I don't have to add a key and a value. I just want to add a value at that particular value is D and I'm sorry. I don't have to use put. I have to use add. Right now, I'll just save this. So this will add the entire data that we're getting from the internet right here. But again, for that, I have to call that function. So I have to say await put um, JSON, sorry, put data. And this will take this data, which will basically be underscore JSON data, decoded data. And this will insert the data in the database. So now we have handled two things. The first one is that if there is internet, this will insert the data in the database. That is, this will update the data in the database. If there is no internet, nothing will happen. Now we have to get the data from database and we have to show that. Now, since my box is already open, I can do a simple thing that is var my map is equal to box dot to map. Now this will uh, return a map of the data and this map is going to be in a format of we will have zero and then the data that we inserted the first data then we will have two uh, one then the second data so I just I just have to worry about the values so I want a list of values here so I will say get all the values and then convert that to a list this will give me a list of all the values in the data that that is we will again have a list of all the JSON datas. But here too, there is a case, uh, there is a scenario where there can be an exception. So my, my map can be empty if somebody is opening the uh, app for the first time and if there is no internet. So I have to check if my map dot is empty. If this is empty, what this means is that I don't have any data in the database as well as there is no internet to insert the data. Else if that's not empty, I uh, what this means is that I have some data in the database. So if this is not empty, I want to create um, a list of data here so a list of data that will be empty by default and if my my map is empty all that i have to do is that i have to add the data with a key let's say empty and then let's say it's not empty then i will say data is equal to this new data that we just retrieved that will be my map so this is done and after having after doing this everything this is going to be a future why because i'm going to use a future builder this will return a boolean value in future and this particular boolean value i have to end here so i will simply say return future dot value true now having done that let's go to our um scaffold 
here in my body I have a center then I have a text I don't want this text thing in my child in my center as a child I need a future builder now this future builder will obviously have a builder I'm saying uh, I have a context and a snapshot but most importantly we need a future and that future is going to be get all data now there can be multiple scenarios here just as we know so if a snapshot dot has data then we have to do something else if it doesn't has data i'm simply returning a circular progress indicator because i'm not hang going to ha i'm not going to handle too many errors as of now if the snapshot has data then we have to check i don't have to check the snapshots data i have to check this particular data list because if this has data that means this process is completed now my data has something or the other so I have to check that if the data dot contains if the data contains this empty this means I don't have any data in my box neither from the internet else if it doesn't contains empty that means I have a list of values right so if this is empty I'm simply going to return a text saying that okay this is empty there is no data else but if this is not empty then I'm going to return a column in my column I'll first have a, a simple image Right, so in the children, I'll first have a simple image that will show some leader box. So I have this sized box and I have this image that's a network image and it shows a leaderboard. After this image, all that I have is expanded visit. And in that expanded visit, I have a list. We will do if I don't use expanded visit, we will get an issue because it's a column. So in my expanded visit, I have a list view builder and it will ask for item builder and item count. Since I already have a list, the item count will be obviously the data dot length and my item, item builder will be context and index and here I'm simply going to return a list tile, right? Let's just save this. Now, if you will take a look at the uh, data that we are returning, so we have a name and we have marks, right? So in my list tile. I'll have title that will be a text visit in my text visit. I'm going to show some data. So dollar and as little bit of string interpolation, go to this data, go to the particular index and then grab the name parameter from there. Right. And it's not data P just data. And in my trailing at the end where I want to show some uh, marks. So I'll just copy this again. I'll paste it here. And now I don't want name. I want marks i'll just save this after this all that i need is to give some styling so that the marks looks bold let me just copy this and we are done let's save it let's run and let's see all the issues that we are going to get so you see when i run it for the first time this has got this data from the internet now even when i turn off the internet right and let's say i refresh this again so even when, I, when my user tries to access the application without internet, as you can see, it prints here no internet. Even then we will have this data to show. Now let's implement the next part that is updating the data. Now for that, I'm going to use a refresh indicator. Let's go here. Let's go to my expanded. And here I have a list builder builder. I'm saying uh, wrap this with a visit. That visit will be refresh indicator and here we have an on refresh parameter now this will return some white data in the future and that is going to be another future that i'm going to quote here so in future we will return a void and the name is update this too is going to be an asynchronous operation and here let me just first copy this complete code because this is the same thing that i'm going to implement there too and i'll just paste it here but here when there's no internet, I want to show some toast that, hey, there's no internet because that will be better. So I have this simple toast. I'll just import this library. And here after putting the data, I have to call set state to make sure that, hey, uh, you have to update the state. Now let's save it. Let's go here and in my own refresh, I want to call update data, right? Let's save this. Now here I have 99, 85, 85, 70, 60, right? Let me go to my index.js file and here let me update it so i want i i like mr robot let's say let's give it 90 i like dark let's give it 85 i like the stranger things 85 money is 70 let's give big bang, big bang theory i like it 100 let's save this now here is the data that we already have here is the updated data right and since we updated it i have to go there because i'm not using node mon it's simple node.js i have to do this now let's click on refresh 
So when we refresh, you can see that the data is updated. We have 90 and 100. And see, the best thing is that only that data which is being updated will be updated here, right? So let's make it better. Let me try to change the data, uh, data again, right? So now Big Bang Theory will go on the top. Let me copy this. Let me paste it here with, uh, let's say, 100. And here I have, mm, let's say, some series Y with uh, 10 marks, right? Let me save this again. Let's go to command prompt. Let's close this. Let's run this again. Let's click on refresh and see. We have a very instant update of data. So this is pretty amazing, right? This is how we can simply cast data and make sure that the user experience is a lot better. And now let's uh, test some uh, particular scenarios. So I'll just close the application. Let's um, uninstall this and let's shut down the internet again. And now let's build and see what happens when a user tries to open the application without internet for the first time. They will see this screen that says no data, right? Let's go to the second scenario. If, if you want, you can add um, a button here or a refresh indicator here too. I just uh, did not do that. So now second scenario, I will again try to open the application for the first time, but this time with internet connection. So let's see what happens when somebody tries to open their application for the first time and with internet connection, which is a most probably an ideal scenario. So when the first time someone opens the uh, application with internet application with internet access, this is how the app is going to perform. And let's say the there is no internet and I'm trying to refresh. So, so the data will be fetched from the database and will be available. Okay. So the image won't be available as there is no internet. And this is something that you can do right now. If you want, there is a direct plugin to cache network images. But if you want, try to Google and try to understand how you can cache network images to using Flutter. And last thing before I go that uh, see storing data and displaying it even when the user is not available is uh, simple. I won't say that is too tough because you are updating the data from the server. So let's say somebody hacks into your application, somebody changes the data, took a screenshot and all that won't be an, an issue because next time when he uh, ac uh, accesses the internet, everything is going to be settled. But trying to do something like changing data and then sending it back to server when your application is offline, that's requires a lot of security measures. So you can do this without much without thinking a lot about security issues but that particular thing that's uh, sending data back to server which has been edited offline will need some extra security layer so that's completely up to you well this video was all about some data caching using flutter using hive i'll catch you again in the next video talking more about flutter coding and whatnot